welcome to Glitch Please, the show where we talk about video games. I'm Ashley. I'm Gus. And I'm Adam. And today's going to be a pretty Nintendo-centric episode, I suspect. You're talking about Labo. There's been a couple of developments uh, in Nintendo Switch's current hardware that we can talk about. Nintendo also just announced their results, their projections, and the retirement of their president. So there's a lot to cover there. If you hate Nintendo, this is not the episode for you. But if you don't, then this should be fun, because we're going to build Labo while we talk. And you know that Gus is definitely going to talk about the PUBG patch that just and dropped Gus, right as we started filming. Right, uh, I'm still digesting all of the patch notes. It's late breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. And Gus will definitely talk about the PUBG patch notes. <laughs> Uh, but before we get into all the nitty gritty, uh, just to let audio listeners know, this is going to be a slightly more video centric episode because we're doing, uh, we, we got Labo, so we're going to be doing some building while we talk. It shouldn't entirely negate the talking and listening experience, but you'll probably get more out of it if you watch the video version of this, either on YouTube or on our website. But we'll get an ASMR mic up to the cardboard, so when you hear us folding and tearing, oh, oh man, I bet See, like here's the popping thing that, the cardboard what, out would sound awesome. That you know what that does to me though is uh, it's the the fuzzy the bad fuzzies you get when you scratch nails down. Do you think so? It's not. It sounds. Good. It's not on that degree, but I always go Ugh. Mm. like anything paper related. I, see. For me. I, just, I, I just get paranoid that I'm going to give myself a cardboard cut. Did you fucking see my cardboard cut the other day? No. A uh, nice segue there. <laughs> no, I didn't see it. Got a cardboard cut? Dude, it, it, well, my finger was like doused in blood. I had like a paper towel wrapped around it. It was completely bloody from cardboard. How? Cardboard's dangerous. Not, not from Labo, though. Not from Labo. I want to try, though, my best. Try well, we'll see if we can outdo Labo. that cardboard cut. Ugh. How did that happen? I was, you know, opening server boxes. That's how, how it happens normally. The life Reach of the in and go, is dangerous. Ah! Yeah. I feel like a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. So what you been playing lately? Um, so I finished up God of War last week, and you know I wasn't. I love the game, absolutely love it. But the end game I felt was I kind of have a love hate relationship with it. Like I don't love everything you do at the end game because uh, it's some of its time challenges, some of its. Uh, and by end game you mean a lot of the activities that you would go back and do post, after completing post game story. content. The, the side that's available stuff. Available to you, yeah. And a lot of that side stuff you can. You can theoretically do that before you finish uh, yeah, the story. Yeah, I, I, I know. I have a friend that, like, before he beat the story, he was, like, level seven and a half. Um, so he did the thing where you get way too powerful for the final boss, and then you just... I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure he die. kicked his butt, yeah. Um, but, so I was going back, and this is a little light spoiler, but there are some enemies at the end game, and there are eight of them. Uh, and I was fighting them, and I felt like I was getting my ass kicked, but then I realized once I focused, it was just a really fun challenge. So I went back, and I beat all of those. Uh, I went back, and... Uh, there's a ch there's a couple challenge regions. One of them is like you're climbing a mountain and doing a challenge. And I got to the top, and then I realized that when you get to the top, it just there's a new set of challenges that you just start from the bottom. And there's a couple challenges in there that like really fucking set me off. And it's the don't get touched one when you're fighting a group of enemies. It's like don't take a single hit. And it like I get so fired up. Like I have to I have to take a break. But the game is so good that I keep wanting to come back to it. So I do keep coming back to it. I beat the first don't get touched challenge, but the second one is like my problem with combat is I'm a berserker. How I just I it's so hard for me to fight the urge to just wade into the middle of a bunch of people. And you're then a god of okay. war. I know. Of course, I know. you're going to do that. I should be able to do that. You're not a god of don't touch me, right? <laughs> so the some of the challenges are fantastic. And I say I, I shouldn't say I hate the end game. I just say that it's a it's a struggle sometimes, and I get very angry. But I still want to come back and like keep doing it. I've done a lot of the end game stuff. I don't know if I'm going to do all the collectibles, but well, now I worry because uh, I've seen how well I play the game compared to how well you play the game. Dude, it's, and it means that I'm not going to be able to get through most of these challenges. It's, it's fucking hard. The, the, there's a, the second challenge area is, is one you have to do in order to get like, I, th I, think, it's, I think it might be the best armor. Uh, it seems like it anyway. But um, it's an area basically with, with mist. And as you walk into it, you have a bar. And when that bar depletes, you die. So you, go, you basically have to run in, kill as many enemies and get as many uh, echoes as you can and then run out and make it out to save your echoes but if you die in the way out you lose it so it's it's almost it's not really roguelikey but it's uh it's very high risk reward so the deeper you go the more chance of reward you get but also the more chance of dying and you need those echoes in order to 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 build the armor that is real good um, but it is there's a lot of stuff to do at end game like if you wanted to stay and fight everything and do all the side content there's a ton there. Like I, I probably play like an hour or two every day before I get really mad and throw my controller into the couch and then say I'm done. See, I'm, I'm about to, well, or I, I was, but this is making it sound like 
maybe a bit much for me. I was about to dive into the platinum for it. Oh man, that fuck that seems really hard. Even that game on the standard difficulty, some of that stuff is real difficult. I can't imagine there, there's two difficulties above where I'm at right now. Fuck, that seems really hard. Yeah, I'm not getting, <laughs> like, I'm not getting that platinum. Real, line. real hard. I mean, you could do it. Nothing's stopping you. Yeah, but I'm pro pro I'm stopping me. I might be stopping me. Yeah. Maybe we did as we discussed last week in the post show. I've discovered that I have a problem. You do have a problem. I do have a problem. Yeah. But I did get my Nino Kuni 2 platinum. I saw that. I saw, yeah, Congratulations. Yes, That's awesome. thank you. Thank How you. How many hours did that take? Uh, it took me a little bit longer. Most people are reporting 80 hours. I took 90. Oh, that's I, not, that's not so bad. It's not too bad. I tend to like just like run around, you know, like being a dickhead, fighting stuff a bunch. And also, I have a tendency to like pause something and then walk away, but that still counts as mm. playtime. Right. So, not sure what the accurate thing there is, but it is, a, is about 90 hours. The game, it's mostly not too bad of a platinum. There's you know, you have to do all the side quests. You have to beat all of the uh, the tainted fiends, and so all of that's pretty standard. <laughs> yeah, they're, that's right. They're tainted. They're tainted, tainted, and that makes them angry. <laughs> that makes them hard fights. Mm. But uh, I, so I did all that. That was pretty easy. There's only one thing that I found kind of annoying, and that's the reason that it took me 90 hours instead of 75. Is that after you go through all of these uh, dreamers mazes, there is a secret 10th dreamers maze. It's mm. not that secret, it's an achievement. But you have to go through all nine, and they're kind of annoying in and of themselves. There are these randomized levels, similar to um, the, I guess like the, the underground areas, areas in, in Persona, the, I forget what they're called again, the um, mementos, there we go, I did it, good job, brain. Similar to that where you go through a certain number of levels and then they'll they'll change every time you go into it. So if you leave the maze and come back, all the levels are different. It's and also timed, right? It's not timed exactly, but the more time you spend in it, the more dangerous enemies get. Gotcha. So and you as you go through these mazes, you collect orbs and you can spend the orbs to reduce the danger levels, or you can use those orbs to open chests and get some of the best equipment in the game. Hmm. So the the nine dreamers mazes range from three floors to 15, 18 floors for the, the longest one, I think. The secret 10th one is 30 floors. Oh my God. And while you're in this area, you can't save. Oh, nice. So if you die, you get kicked out of the maze, and that's you it. You, you, just, you just lost all of the yeah. equipment, you lost all of that stuff. And at the end of the 10th maze is this level 95 monster. Nothing in the game is level 95. Mm. Well, until you get in the dreamer's maze, but nothing is like nothing is at that level. So to grind levels efficiently from 70, which is what you probably beat the game at, to 95 to fight this guy, you just fight the end boss like 60 times. Oh, really? Like wow. oh man, what a fucking pain in the ass that is. <laughs> so you yeah. did that? Yeah, it's not hard like you never the end boss, that's a thing not that Difficult. Yeah. Well, yeah, when you're 95 you never, and he's level 70, I mean, yeah, you're just like pushing him around. Yeah, you never die to him. It's just kind of a hassle, and you have to then skip all the cutscenes and then load back in, and then, oh, fight the guy again. And it's just, it's a hassle, and it takes, it's what, like a five, six hour process. What an awful existence for that boss. Yeah. He's like, I'm the most powerful creature in this game, and I'm just going to get rolled over and over and over. It's like the end of Doctor Strange. Well, it's what it's. Here's the humbling thing is when they find out that it's because they're not remotely the most powerful right. in the game. You're, you're having to power up for something else. So 80 to 90 hours for a platinum trophy on a JRPG actually seems very short. Yeah. For a, for a game of that genre, I'd say that's very humane. Yeah, I was yeah. expecting... Compared to the first Nino Kuni, the first Nino Kuni, I think, was like double that for a platinum, right? Yeah, the first Nino Kuni had an issue with grindiness for sure. Part of it was that you, <clears throat> as you go through, you basically... You tame monsters. There's, it's a very Pokemon-style element. You, you tame monsters, and then you can uh, use them. They get more experience, and then they can evolve into like a better form, whatever. And there are a just a couple of them that are so goddamn rare that they are virtually impossible to come across. Mm. And even if you come across them, your chances of taming them are very, very low. So I got like 99% of the monsters I needed in that, 
and the final one was just such a hassle. Like I would come back to the game and spend an hour or two just I was on I was doing that game on the treadmill mm -hmm. so I'd be walking on the treadmill trying to find and tame this stupid monster and eventually I just was it like it was too much I gave up was it one of those things where when you try to tame it there's a tame chance like a pokeball catch can I be honest I don't recall oh, no. a lot of the details I remember in the first Pokemon there was a I think the, the one of the rare Pokemon's was Taurus I remember he was really hard to like get to spawn and also really hard to catch so a lot of people would waste their master ball on him but like I didn't have my master ball, so I had to try to catch him just like, ah, here's an ultra ball or a great ball. It's like fucking sucks. So uh, the first Nino Kuni, according to how long to be, uh, the first Nino Kuni main story is about 45 and a half hours. Nino Kuni right. 2 main story is about 35 hours. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely shorter when it comes to that genre of game. Yes, yeah, most, like, uh, Persona 5, I spend 130 hours on. Mm -hmm. I'm nowhere near a Platinum. That is going to require another playthrough for me. Mm -hmm. Because I did not play nearly efficiently enough. But still, still on my list. Once the Witcher, Persona Five. Yeah, I got Witcher to finish. I'm almost, I'm, I'm like halfway through Blood and Wine. Really enjoying it. It's fucking awesome. I play like a couple hours every day. It's great. And I got, I'm gonna do Horizon after that because it's a shorter one. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely I'll, do that. Then I'll go to Persona. Yeah, I'm. So, uh, I've got a couple of weeks before any new like big games come out. Detroit's coming out end of May. Mm. Uh, Pillars of Eternity Two is coming out on the eighth. But this is uh, this is almost a now that God of War is is out and I've at least finished the story on that game. I'm in a little bit of a lull. Not sure where to go from here. Stardew Valley multiplayer supposedly coming very very soon. The um, uh, the Chucklefish CEO I follow. He's one of the few game developers I follow very very closely on Twitter. <laughs> said that it should be ready in about a month, and that was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So we're we're about that time. About that time. So who knows? Maybe I'll be doing some multiplayer farming. Yeah, I'm excited to to try that out. I, I want more. You ever played Stardew? I started like it's just not for me on a solo basis. I'm expecting that if I play with friends, it might so be more do, fun. Do we have details on how many players that it's going to support? Uh, I okay. So from what I understand, it's four players. There's one person with farmhouse, and then uh, three people have like little. They're, they're like bunk houses, sort of. Or no, not not bunk houses, but they got the little cabins. They're indentured servants. And one person is in charge of ending the day, essentially. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, each person can divide and conquer. So, Some, someone can go off to the desert. They so won't. only one person gets the dope house, and everyone else gets the little shitty shacks. Okay, how much time do you spend in that dope house? If that I'm, house, that dope you house do the is farm, nothing I'll but be in a the dope status house. symbol. Yeah, I want it. So we should all play together. So I'm getting at. It would be yeah. so much fun. It was so much fun. We can invite Gavin. Yeah. Gavin is really into Stardew Valley. The uh, my text conversations with Gavin are almost exclusively about Stardew Valley. We don't talk about anything else. <laughs> we just talk about Stardew Valley with each other. I yeah. was uh, on a shoot uh, for a Rich Teeth video a couple days ago, and I was talking with the, the makeup artist, and she was talking about how much she loves Stardew Valley. And I was like, Oh, what kind of spreadsheets do you have? And she was like, You make spreadsheets? And I was like, Oh, let's talk about uh, Stardew Valley <laughs> spreadsheets. <laughs> See, I skipped the spreadsheets uh, and went straight to two things. Mm. One, there's a mobile wiki, mm. and it's one of the things that I like about the mobile wiki is that it actually downloads the data to your phone. Mm. So if I'm on a plane, which is a great place to play Stardew Valley, I can reference it. I, you know, if I can be like, I, uh, what is this villager's favorite item? Because I'm trying to make friends with them, and this is important. Mm -hmm. I can look all that stuff up mm. without needing an internet connection. True. So that's great. Hmm. The other thing that I got really into is uh, there is a website that does crop calculations. Mm -hmm. So you can put in basically what like what uh, date it is and figure out what what's the most efficient crop for the time you've got in the season. Like what should you, what should you be raising? We know now that the answer is at all times. Starfruit. Always. But until you get the Starfruit, because that is a later game development, what should you be raising? Mm -hmm. What should you be getting money out of? I will say. I'm going to stay in the house, is what I'm going to do. So, yeah, I guess he tweeted on April 10th that it's going to be ready. That's been two weeks! They said it's ready when? It should be ready. To, he said, still making good progress on fixing bugs. If all goes well, it should be ready in about a month. Okay. So we got a couple weeks left. Mm -hmm. So excited. Until we start a farm and then I quit my, our farm. Well, we'll just replace you. <laughs> we'll, I don't know, like, like, 
it'll be easy, whatever. People wow, can play it'll with be us. easy. Yeah, that's Ouch. right. That's right. Ouch. You just, just want to live in a big old house. You want to status symbol. I do. I do. I, I, I just want us all to live in big houses. Why should one person get the big house? What's your, uh, what, well, you think we should have just like different rooms? Yes. Nice. Uh oh. Or bunk beds. What? Uh, ben just updated me. Stardew Valley multiplayer release. PC first. Then Switch, yes. then both yes. Xbox and PS4. Yes, knew that. Yes. So it's okay. going to be... It's Switch definitely is the first console to get it, but not the first platform to get it. Right. right. They, were, they were very careful with that wording. Yeah. They they announced that when they announced Stardew for Switch, yeah, right? Yeah. They said they were, it'll like, be it'll the be first coming. one to get the Switch, first console. Make It makes a lot of sense, too. Like, uh, when it comes to Switch, I would absolutely sit down in a circle with Switches and just play for a while. Mm -hmm. Like a goddamn dork, and it would be wonderful. All about it. Had to be a pretty comfortable circle. Bean bags. Yeah, we have bean bags. We can do this. We can yeah. use the. I like to call it the rumpus room. The, uh, the use, there's a, we have an arcade. Our, we do have an arcade. That's what I call the rumpus room. It's, it's just like a, we call it like a flex area, yeah. and that's not a very exciting name. So I figure it's if a you very just corporate name. Though. Move aside the ping pong tables, get a nice circle of bean bag chairs, and there you go, farming central. Yeah, all right. It'll be a good time. I I have one thing to talk about briefly, if I can. I forgot to talk about it. You may. Um, so I got a device, I got a sub pack, which is like a haptic feedback audio device. You got a Steven Subtick? Yeah, I got a Steven Subtick. You just, what, I you sit just, on him. You just wrap him around your body yeah. a little bit? No, I just sit on him. I lay back on him. Oh. And he shakes me. Soft chicken boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a sub pack is, it's it's kind of like a, a subwoofer, but without the, the audio. Like you put the audio through your headphones or your speakers, and the sub pack will basically vibrate your body. As a sub, as a subwoofer would, but without having to play your music super loud, and so everyone can hear. And basically, like you l lay it on your chair. There's a there's a, a, a version you strap to yourself, um, but I got the chair version because mm -hmm. um, it's a little beer. And you lean on it, and it will pump bass through you, and it's fucking unbelievable. Um, I haven't spent enough time with it to fully endorse it. Uh, I would like to spend a little more time gaming with it, uh, but just listening to music, it was like kind of an unbelievable experience. Uh, you you feel every little ounce of bass and like you sort you sort of hear things differently and it's a very like kind of zen experience mm -hmm. listening to music. I found myself listening to a lot more like like rap and EDM rather than rock music because uh, it just has better bass. Mm -hmm. um, I did try it briefly with games last night, but I would like to try it more. But I tried it with Wolfenstein uh, just to hear some machine guns and oh boy, is it fucking awesome! I'll have to bring it in so you can try it out. Have you heard about um, the the haptic jacket that Disney just announced? No, but I'm... So this is what you got? Yes. Okay. I I want to say that I, I don't recommend buying one of these just yet. Hmm. I, because I haven't... I don't have enough time with it, and they're expensive. So... Right. Well, Disney... So uh, this has just come up. Disney... Uh, Disney Research, MIT Media Lab, and Carnegie Mellon University just unveiled a, a concept for a haptic force jacket that I think is meant to be... Okay, so if you picture it like Ready Player One, mm -hmm. and they have like their like the haptic suits, so you can like they'll you, you can feel, feel things. That's kind of what it's intended. Um, so it's lined with airbags that are controlled by a computer that will like inflate and deflate to like put pressure. Interesting. Um, and simulate touch. Um, Disney envisions the jacket's going to be used with VR headsets, which makes sense. Um, so it can simulate hugs, being hit or punched. Hugs. Um, I like how they put hugs before being hit or punched. Yeah. You it's know, Disney. But, but yeah, hugs is the best. That's what we go to video games for. That part. is really fascinating. Uh, yeah, so this is, a, this is a video of the concept. And uh, you can see the, the airbags being inflated and deflated. Uh, the the jacket is about bags. five pounds. Uh, and then it's got a, a valve system that inflates and deflates 26 different air compartments. And it's got like wow. adjustable sleeves. Uh, the It's actually repurposed life vest. Cool. And so it's it's a pretty cool concept, but uh, I think it's got a ways to go as far as refinements and design go before it's like real sexy. So there is, there's one vest that's not out yet that I'm looking at that is like a tactile audio vest. Instead of using airbags, it uses like transducers, which basically are like the little vibrating sub pack things. Uh, and it is zoned. Uh, it's just a vest though, but it basically will do the job of like what a sub pack does, but it will strap to your whole your body front and back and it has like different zones. So you'll feel it in different places, uh, kind of like this. Mm. But you'll also feel all the like the the base moving through you, which I'm like fully on board with haptic tech now. I will wear fucking any device that makes my experience better. This is it has been so cool. 
I, I, the next thing I'm going to do is hook up Elite Dangerous, hook up my Hotosh, oh, hook up my sub pack, and throw on my VR headset and just like kick back. I watched a video of Elite. Uh, and just hearing the engines like spin up for for I don't know what it's called like like warp speed or whatever uh, was fucking awesome. It'd be awesome if uh, you put the vest on, then you get like too close to a star and the gravity pulls you in, so the vest crushes you to death. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. It was so awesome. Uh, yeah. So that's my quick bit on subpack. I will get back to you on more like next week because I am kind of addicted to it. I brought it home and Grace was like, "Cool." You bought that, huh? And I was like, yeah, it's fucking awesome. And uh, I, she I, used it? I set her up, and she tried it out, and she's like, I would like one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. She's, so, should, she's a believer now. Yeah, she went from like a total skeptic to totally into it. Yeah, bring it in. Let's try it out. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah, definitely. Cool. You been playing anything? Gus? Sadly, no. You've been no. pretty busy, right? Yeah, I've been busy, and... Uh, I'm doing a home renovation at the moment, so all my stuff's packed. Nice home renovation. So uh, yeah, my P- I had to unplug my PC Bowling last games. Sunday, this past Sunday. So no. it's uh, it's out of commission. Well, do you because you've got gaming set up at the office? Do you find yourself like sneaking time? I haven't had time here at the office. I've been no. I've been out filming too much stuff. So ho- hopefully soon I can get back into the swing of things. So basically, doing the labo stuff last week is the most that you can. Doing the labo stuff. The last thing I did was. Um, um, Play, uh, watch you play a little bit of God of War, and then we did the Labo together, and that's it. So the, la- the actually the very last thing before I unplugged everything was I downloaded and installed God of War on my PS4. And I was like, well, I'll play you later, <laughs> and like unplugged Ouch, it. But hey, it's it downloaded. Works. Yeah, that's so yeah. Good. We did uh, we did a two streams last week. Did we did one uh, last Thursday, the day before God of War came out, uh, just showing off the first two hours or so, uh, and then on Friday we did a little bit of live build on Labo because. It, that was the day it came out. I went to the store. I bought some Labo. We wanted to put it together, so we did a little bit of a stream. That was a lot of fun. I haven't Streaming touched Labo. God of War was interesting because the first time, I, having really not a lot of experience with God of War games and in general having come off kind of a more of a JRPG binge where mm-hmm. the combat works very differently, it was a big adjustment period for me to get used to God of War's combat style mm. and that I couldn't just berserk into everything because I would get my ass handed to me. Yeah. So when I was playing through the first two hours the first time, I spent, like, there were a couple fights that I got absolutely destroyed on and that I found myself, like, playing, like, ten times just trying to get through this. The One of the biggest ones being the, one of the, monsters, uh, enemies in God of War is the one that disappears on you, what are they called? The Revenant. I fucking and hate the Revenant. <laughs> it's, this, it's this really annoying oh, thing my in that uh, if you swing an axe at it, it just poofs into dust mm. and disappears and goes somewhere else and then throws uh, some and it super powerful at projectile like at you. Effect. So what you have to do is stun it because it's too fast for your axe, but it's not too fast for an arrow. Mm. So you have to have um, Atreus shoot it with an arrow, and then you can swing an axe at it. Got it. And then but you only get, you it'll only be stunned a, for a couple seconds. Yeah, you only get a couple hits in, and then, then you have, have to do it all over again. And repeat that whole process. Yeah. So getting used to that was just a nightmare. And so the first couple of fights against the Revenant, I got destroyed. Playing the first two hours during the stream after I'd been playing the game for like 30 hours... So different. I didn't die a single time. Yeah, you were, you, were, you, were, you, were, you were a monster in that stream. Thank you. You were killing it. The heavy Literally. dragger didn't kill me once. Good. And that was another fight that had, that had tripped me up at the beginning. And I was playing along. I was expecting to let everyone watching down and make them frustrated because I was dying a bunch of times. Yeah. And then I didn't die at all. And I felt like, you know what I felt like? I felt like a god of war. Dude, I felt uh, the be- great. Learning the combat in the game was tricky. At first, I was playing it almost like a shooter. Like, I was just throwing my axe and recalling it and trying to get distance and just keep throwing my axe because it, it felt like if I got close, I would get fucked up. So I was just, like, chucking it. But it was fun. I learned how to chuck Max real good. <laughs> so, fun times, but the Labo stream was a lot of fun because we sat down and we... We built the, this car. We, we built the car. The car Can't is like tell? a 10-minute ve- build. It's a, it obviously is a car. What's wrong with you? Obviously, you do not think this is a car? It's a car. It goes like this, too. Uh, we'll put these in. Um, let's see. I don't think these are synced to this one right now. So, um, you know what? Let's talk about Labo since we're doing that. Now. So 
syncing these up, and then I need to put the software in as well. Uh, I didn't realize this. I have one physical Switch game, and it's Zelda. Mm. And I think that's because Nintendo sent us that, mm. uh, and I, I guess I forgot that I had it in there because I've never taken it out to put another game cartridge in there. Right. And so I forgot that I had it physical. I thought I had it digital. So there it is. That's on me. It's physically there. But got Labo. Do you want to look it? No. I was just about no, to suggest that. No. <laughs> I can't, who, can't remember who it was that like recently. Was it Chad? Yeah. I forgot about that. Okay, so who, who, who recently Labo. Chad? Chad licked it. I think accidentally he put it in his mouth to change games or something. Didn't know. Gross. Yeah. Uh, so the the cool thing about the Labo software is that it has so it's got there's a bunch of different builds that come with it. There is um, there's a race car and that's like a 10 minute build. There's uh, well this is a house or something right. There's the piano and that's like a three hour build. The piano is easily the most complex thing they do. There's the fishing rod uh, and then there's I don't know, like a little, is that a little motorcycle? motorcycle or something. Where's the motorcycle? So bring this up. So here. See, the piano is the cool one. I think you have to you have to build up. So yeah, here we go. There's um, and these are uh, the software is actually put in order of build time essentially. Oh wow. So there's the RC car. They estimate ten minutes. There is the the fishing rod, and they estimate that to be three three and a half ish hour. No, wait, hold on. I'm not doing that math Two at all. Correct. Minutes. An hour and a half to. Two hours and thirty mm, minutes. Two hours and thirty minutes. Thank you. Wow, very much. Th that that's uh, not that that's too much time, but that is a lot of time. Like the house being almost two to, just two to three hours. But compared to building a real house, that's really a. Deal. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I just the house for ants. The, and the, the thing the thing that makes me a little concerned is that you guys are adults. And you didn't finish building the fishing rod, or like adults building this. Well, we also time. didn't spend the full 90 minutes on it. But, but I'm, I'm we, wondering. We, we I'm wondering, spent about this. This was accurate. This was 10 minutes to build. It's pretty. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. I'm wondering how the kids will deal with the complex well, building. But, but the, it, is the a, whole it is a good point, skill to teach them. It the is. whole point of this, though, is <clears throat> is to teach kids building. I think. So I agree. I, I don't think it's a bad thing. Nintendo Labo exists to trick kids into learning STEM. Yeah, well, and and and, and kind of like cosplay a little bit. Um, I that saw too. I saw a great. Speaking of children not having the patience, uh, I saw a great tweet combining God of War and Labo the other day. Um, someone wrote up a hypothetical situation that could possibly arise um, regarding Labo. I think I sent yeah. it to broadcast. I don't All know right. if they can they can bring it up. I don't want to. So Kratos and Atreus are building a Labo fishing pole. Atreus, which so she said. It's, it's a Atreus. Oh. <laughs> No. You're saying that because I thought it was Mate, Atreus. You said Atreus. Initially. And now I'm confused. Yeah, you said Atreus. It's supposed to be Atreus. Okay, thank God. Uh, so Atreus. Kratos and Atreus are building a Labo fishing pole. Kratos, be sure to crease every fold, boy. Atreus, can we do the piano now? Kratos, you are not ready. <laughs> it's true. It's true. The piano seems like easily the you, most is this, thing. You got to build everything. Up to it. Or what so is this, this uh, each of the different projects is color coded. So, okay, so see this is just one the project. the RC car. This was one sheet, and this is green. The fishing pole is blue. There's orange. There's oh, so there's like six sheets for the fishing pole. Yes. yes. The, the fishing pole has five mole, steps, dude. and we got through step. We got one. through step one. Wow. When we were streaming, we, the stream was uh, it was an hour and a half anyway. We the car RC car is about ten minutes to build, and then we spent a while playing with it because the software that runs it is quite interesting. And you can, can do a lot of uh, custom things with it as well. So yeah, we'll try that out. But I figured we could also just continue building our fishing pole. So I'm gonna mm, pull that in. Go. So people ask why it's like what you, you're gonna do it. We do. I, I didn't. I I'm not. I can't jump in the middle of a project. Sure you can. Well, well you're not in the middle. You're right on step two. Um, yeah. See, we have. There's a couple steps. We'll have to. Well, I'll fast forward through some of this stuff because we. This oh, it's already. Oh, I thought it was already fast forwarding it. Dang. Nice. The music's uh, great for this. I'm, I'm sad that we can't hear it right now. Yeah, the music is really dope. It's uh, it's parts. like it's kind of like 70s jazzy. Sex could break out at any minute. They look or you know that's what the kids like. Or something wholesome like. This, cookies could break out at any minute. Is this exclusively for the fishing rod? Yeah, so uh, there's not exclusively necessarily, that's just the bag of special parts. Okay. So different builds will have different special parts. If you look uh, on the fishing pole, right now we've got uh, three bits of the fishing pole created. It's telescoping, and so we built 
baby bear. You got a little grommets. Mom bear. And Papa Bear. Very nice. Is that what they call them? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> and uh, so then we just have to get each one together. I'm, I don't want to do this before we get into the yeah, instructions, but basically they'll that, just go yeah. ba -doop, and then they, they go in a telescope. So yeah, this, some of the joke. special hardware on this one is there's a washer and grommet for each of these, which the string will then go through. No, your string doesn't just They're, tear up your cardboard. For those that aren't the don't know these are like not just it's not just a little square of cardboard There's like multiple layers here like this is pretty I don't want to say durable But it's more durable than when you'd think it a was small... actually kind of a challenge to fold that one Like yeah. the cardboard's so thick and you have to crease it so well. Yeah, it's um, yeah Yeah, the uh, the what we liked about this so far is that the it's very precise Yeah, you know exactly where to it this all of the cardboard pops out really easily. It doesn't just tear up it and leave like mm -hmm. little bits or you know the flakes where you just get a single layer of cardboard mm -hmm. it's all punched really well it's good good cardboard quality yeah i thought that uh because it's really dense because it it popped out so easily that it would be kind of uh flaky they just cut apart. it well right it's just it's just really cut well okay all right so i want to see i want to see if i can skip you up can to step two forwarding. it's a shame you can't like hop into that's like, a, i was hoping step. to be able to like, about, skip like, up to step b, two right that's like where the step is over there oh look yeah. at that Oh, select a step you've already seen to jump right to it. Uh, that's Papa Bear. So now we're looking for another piece of cardboard. Does it not say what, what piece it is? It might have been way earlier. <laughs> yeah, we might have fast forwarded past it. So here's what we're looking for. It needs to have a little blip on top and a hole in it. Is that not it? No. Hmm. Should... I feel like the tutorial should probably say on the screen what the it, I think it probably did. Now for, uh, okay, so this is a little box. It says now for the much smaller little box. We've got this, we have not done anything with this yet. Okay, did we punch box. it out uh, earlier? Maybe we did, maybe it's in I, the box. I think when we, I think it asked us to punch out the Papa Bear piece and that piece at the same time, and we punched them both out and we didn't actually use that piece. Okay, yet. then that means it's in the box. You wanna grab the box, it's just right off the set. It comes in a pizza box, Yeah, nice. so this box is surprisingly heavy. Okay, that is the tiny box that we were looking for. Great job, everyone, but especially Gus. Woo! If you lay that out, print it side down, and then it will show you the where you need to fold it, which is basically, all the spots. Show me. I'll fold this. Yep. Oh, it's going so fast. Oh, we can stop it. You can also, uh, we haven't sh demonstrated this yet, but you can also, I think, hit, what is that, X, and you can free cam, so you can yeah, rotate so the uh, here, item around. Let's see, X. See so this? Like you can see it from all angles. That way you really know, if you have any question about what it is you're supposed to be doing with the pieces at any step. I appreciate that the other it. parts are just off in the distance. Yeah. They're still there. They exist in this world. Well, they shit, they're not in the right place on our desk. They are canon. Is this Papa what it's asking me to do? Did, you just... You, you skipped way... You, you complained it was you. going too fast, and, and then, then when we stopped it, you did it. Well, you guys kept talking. I wanted to figure it out. You gotta let us know when you're done creasing. You can't skip ahead in Labo. The, the That's creasing not allowed. is an important step, but so is following the instructions, Adam. I creased it. <laughs> and I folded it. Okay, so it did that, it. and then done. Done that already. I'm way ahead of you, Labo. Oh Ooh. shit! <laughs> Look at what you did. What do you mean? I'm perfect. <laughs> so now we take the Papa Bear, and it looks like this end with the uh, with the grommet. Same with the grommet. Okay. And the printed side slides in away from Going the grommet. grommet. Okay. Uh. And then right, let's see. All right. Hold on. Hold over hold on. the top okay. as you slide it in. Okay, we're in. All right. And then it looks like it's going to snap in there, and then you fold over, and that will uh, now seal you close the two bits it. Now together. you close it. Okay. See, don't assume anything with Labo. Expect the unexpected. What can I say? I learned my lesson. It's a new <laughs> horizon in cardboard technology. Oh, are we going to are we going to Voltron them now? Yeah, now I think they all go together. So uh, you what, take, Watch that tab. Hold on. I'm yeah, looking, make I'm sure looking. the tab's folded up, and that they're all that all of the grommets are aligned. I like. I like saying the word grommet. grommet. Yeah, it's a fun word. You like Wallace and Gromit. All right. And then ready, and it slides in. Uh huh. Ta-da! It snapped, so it's okay. never going to come apart now. Yeah. yeah that, now it, now that it lives there. Catches it. Yep. Now you've got a telescoping fishing pole. No, don't, don't you dare. <laughs> Treat your. 
I was trying to untell us back. Slide mama bear and baby bear in and out. This seems really perverted. <laughs> what do you think about this? For audio listeners. Is that it, Probably Mara, or is that bad. just super yeah. irritating? I assume that's irritating. Okay, so there we are. Oh. And now we take this part, which we have and did not misplace. Yes. Gilby? Flip it. Crease it. Bop it. Twist it. Or do we just have to crease all the creases? Is that, is that what the plan that's, is? That's pretty much how it goes. Be extra careful here. Crease along these two fold just lines. two of them, so crease those two fold did lines. It. All right. Uh-huh. Oh, what was that little thing happened there? And then the two tabs. Crease the other two tabs. Creasing them. Creasing them. Creasing them. Done. Decreased. And then the four tabs. The four tabs. And yeah. leave them standing up. Leave them up. Got it. What is, oh, there. One, two, three, four. I didn't see them at first. One, two. Counting is a necessary knowledge. It's a pre-requirement. Three, uh, four. Uh, uh. Yeah, it wasn't on the, if you, if wasn't on the box. The, All right, they're up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so there we go These there. Are back down, I guess. And now flip it. Flip it. And it looks like that goes into Papa Bear. Like this, right? But, oh, wait. Down here? And then oh, you, I see, see. you see the yeah. holes there? It's probably, based on the steps, going to go, oh. oh, look at what you do. Okay. So here. All right. Uh oh. Okay. I'm a little nervous. Okay, so if I rewind it a little bit, you'll, you can see. Okay, Go. so see where it's at that way? Yeah. And then moving ahead. Uh-huh, yeah. Take it, flip it over. Uh-huh. It goes in. Done. Get in there. Done. Ta-da! Makes a little dust pop out every time I connect something. That's nice. The rod's finished. Congratulations, we have completed one of five steps. Could be a shotgun. If you need a break, use your imagination. The game will understand. Oh, well. oh we should have gotten to this point. <laughs> we should have. Yeah, but like two seconds. Away. No, but you had to go. I had, had to have to go. I had, I had to pressing. fix something up. Yeah. I forgot about it at the store. But now we're on step two of five, <laughs> making the real. Okay. Sheep okay. A and B, pop that shit out. Oh, okay, Gus, this is your turn. I just we, did okay, all uh, stuff okay, on. so here's, you, you motherfucker. <laughs> here's we need. Give me a. We need these little bits from B. <laughs> I like when Gus calls me motherfucker. <laughs> Here, we're gonna do a little, little ASMR. Ooh, that last little bit was good. Uh, is it this one? Let's see, uh, yes. You're supposed to whisper while you do it. Not slowly. Rip the cardboard. You have to carefully pop it out. I'm in the reel. Make sure. <laughs> okay, really? that got weird. Now let's move on <laughs> with our family friendly labo. So we got the we have these two little bits from B, which I got. Uh, from A we've got one two is circles. Empty. Yep, that's empty. And now this one's empty as well. Magic. See, when I do that for like board games, I keep those for like a month afterwards just to be sure. You what you just did really triggered me. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Are those not important? No. Those are not important. Those, are, you, those are holes in these. Yeah. See. You never know. We're, we're labo experts. We've been, we did step one. Been around the block. How do I pop out the seagull? Stop. Okay, so now we've got those all popped out. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Very good. Thank you. Oh, no. Move these ten parts from C and D. Okay, here we go. You want to pop these out? This is D. I'll get D. Yeah. One, you take two. D. Got that good D. Yeah. Oh, you want to do it? C. Yeah. Uh, wow, you're aggressive. Yeah. With you. you can. We're seeing a real difference in pop out. I, I, I do not approve. Right of that, the, that I was, do not approve of what's happening. That was side violent. Of the that thing flew. <laughs> we're gonna have a difficult time finding these afterwards. So it's the game. The it's pretty good about showing you too, like what so isn't the, needed. The All the little wavy stuff is basically you're not going to be using this. So yeah, we do have to save this one because there is still a piece here. Yes. Okay. There's one piece left. Interesting. So th is this something you would keep? This little dot? Uh, I would say keep it for now. What does it look like on there? It's still there. Great. Keep it in. 
I'm doing the fine popping out now. All the little slots. Okay. Right, you dirty little slot. Oh my god. What? It had some dirt on it. Inappropriate. Just telling you what it is. This one has so many things to pop out. Do you remember those old? It's all pretty easy to understand though, and I like yeah. that. Those old like air-powered guns that would shoot little foam discs. Yeah, of course. And they had like shapes of like Star Wars planes. I, I don't remember that, but yeah. Those are fucking awesome. <laughs> I wish I had one. Right oh, now. we have to remember that portion of the podcast. Well, I have these little discs that I want to shoot. Did you ever play Pogs? Yes. My, I was. What a fucking, what a scam that game was. I was a little bit past the age demographic for Pogs, but my little brother went mental for Pogs. And for those who also miss Pogs, they were these little, they were essentially just these cardboard circles. This is a Pog. And they had stuff printed on them. Uh, in there were rare Pogs, and Ooh. you would collect the Pogs, and then you would play Pogs. And how you played Pogs was like this. With like, you had, a, you had like your slammer. super, yeah, and that was like a plastic or rubber or something, yeah. and then you'd use it to like flip yeah, the cardboard, so, so and then that was how you won. I was trying never to like, damp, clear like on land on the other. I don't remember. What, what is this? Is this a nothing? Uh, that looks like a nothing, but don't chuck it yet. Okay. I put it over here. I, okay, they, gotcha. they came out of right here. Okay. Oh man, I hope that All right. you didn't okay. have anything left in it. Moving no, on. Oh, what's uh, that? What's that show? Uh, C what? and D. Is this oh, I didn't pop part out. we C. pop out? Yeah. No, no, no. See that? No, no. See, but see, it's not highlighted. It is not highlighted. Yeah. Black means it's already gone. White means it should still be there. Right. Got gotcha. It. Nice. Okay, moving on. We have removed lots of parts. Here's uh -oh. a pro tip. Hey, Bernie, you want to come build Labo with us? You I can can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, busy? <laughs> I don't know any video games besides Sea of Thieves right now. Are you still in that? Bernie is yeah, playing Sea of the Thieves. Only person, I think. Wow. Like constantly. Th this pro tip would have been really fucking helpful about five minutes ago. That's fucking awesome. Mm, we can do what? By Sorry, I'm very stretching mad the forward button. To we the probably, right if you pick up the finger. screen, you could have just flipped with our finger wow. and fast forwarded through the entire thing. That's pretty oh. cool, man. Now we know. Well, more thanks. You, that's now, what you when you're a lab version. Moving on. Moving on. Okay, so start with this printed side down. Uh huh. Who's building? Who wants to build? Gilby infuriated me with his building before. How did Very I infuriate violent. you? I was skipping good. ahead with your skipping. Uh, look at it, it's great. It did go together in the end. Yeah. Yes. Crease along, fold a line, one by one. Look at me, so slow and methodical, like a true craftsman. Look, I thought I almost spilled something on my laptop again. <laughs> <laughs> did your last laptop recover? It did. It worked fine for a long time. Good. Glad to hear it. Because I felt kind of bad about that, even though it was not. It's not your fault at all. It was entirely me. Where is it on podcast? It was. It was, it was on, on Glitch, please. Yeah. yeah. It was just. Look at that. Was, was it your attention to detail was fucked up. That wasn't popped out. I didn't pop that. Oh, sorry. I mean, that that, you. you're fine, Ashley. Is no, it no. supposed to be popped out? I think no, this was out. me over here. Oh, uh, okay. It doesn't look like it's supposed to be popped out. Oh, you mean it wasn't separated? Yeah. This part right there. That that thing. You see, it's popped out there. <laughs> Moving on. All right, I think I have creased them all. <laughs> You're gonna this is a hell of a podcast. All right. Pull the Look, all the way over. We made a caveat at the beginning that this was going to be more of a visual thing. I'm with you. I'm with you, dude. All right, start building for real. Oh, this is... We need what, more hexagons. instead of building for fake? That's okay. what it says. Here we go. Dude. You ready? You going doot, doot, doot. Doot, doot. Fold it. They coming together? Coming together? Uh, insert the tabs in the slots, starting with the biggest one. What happened here? This one like went down. Okay, I got it. And then that goes in there and secures it. And then boom, done. I will say the models they have uh, are okay. very nice and satisfying. Now I need, uh, these are the parts that give me the Vive logos. <laughs> <laughs> you threw one and then fucking handed one. Right. Well, you didn't catch the first throw, so I didn't want to throw another. Well, one. You, I didn't catch it because you didn't make it. I mean, let's <laughs> let's let's put blame where blame belongs. Hold these, Hold these tabs. Okay, like a true craftsman and craftswoman. You sure they're not Craftspeople. side specific? It says they're identical. They're side specific. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now uh, one of these will them. go in, and you alternate them where the tabs are. Yep. Boom. 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 Nice. Ta -da! That's the real. You can see Very the. Very nice. 
these tabs folded over and then the folded over part here goes into the empty part there. There we go. Done. I feel like we need a music track behind this. Maybe we can get the lab on music lab, yeah, and, and just like, like do, 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 do. It might be do, playing. Do, we just can't do, hear do, it out do, here. Do. All right. Done so. All right. I like how it, it addresses these individually, despite the fact it's identical. Just to really make sure it's super easy and accessible. Insert them too. We know. We already did. Okay. It's shaping up nicely. Let's fit the reel into the rod. Okay, so. Good luck. You want the Labo right. logo facing towards the rod. Just like this? Yep, just like that. Uh, wait, what part is that? Okay, yeah. Uh, and then oh. if you turn it on the side. Mm -hmm. Yep, you see that? Okay, yep, this, this, we this seem part comes out. And that part goes out. And that appears to slide in. Slides through up into the blue where the semicircular hole is. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Did you get it this far in? <laughs> it took me many years before I got it that far in. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that means. I was making a joke. Huh. Uh, what is it stuck on? Probably cardboard. I would have bet. Oh, I see what it is. It's this little lip right here. Just got to push that in. Oh, okay. Yep. Inferior build from Adam. No, causing right. an issue there. That was your build. You built. You that built. Build. You fucking. I saw you put those that were, in there. Those were your creases. No, those are the good parts. Okay. All right, and get the tabs. I assume those tabs the go tabs in there. Tabs go into the little slots. What does it say? You might have to adjust the position. Yeah, of course. All right, it is in. This thing's fucking like kind of meaty for a, a cardboard fishing rod. Uh, well, you know, the the thing is, kids will destroy it anyway. Yeah. That's one of the challenges. It's been one of the concerns for people about it being cardboard all along is, okay, first of all, this seems expensive. Second of all, my kids are going to destroy it. And they are. I'm already seeing pictures of torn labo all over the place. I wonder what five more steps is going to be because it seems like we're, you're a lot Okay, we're on two of five. Yeah, it's Thank not you. five more. more. I, think they, I think as well they'll get smaller. So they're sure. broken to chunks. So this was a big step. This is a big step. And then I think we'll have, like, put the... String on will be a whole step, so yeah. we'll see. Okay, now we're making the center of the reel. It's the part that will hold the left Joy-Con. Ta-da! So you got that part? Crease, 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 crease. Did that make it intense? It's so intense. All right, just fall, following the direction. We can see how this would be a good thing following with kids, like says. teaching kids how to yeah. build stuff and like how like how do things go together. I could see how anyone would like and this. So that, Building stuff is fun. Well, I think so also that builds like, into like, uh, like engineering well, disciplines. I think the fact that it's cardboard also teaches them to be careful with it on top of everything else. <laughs> yeah, they won't. They yeah. won't be. I mean, they break it, then it's like, oh, then you, now you don't have a fucking toy, you little piece of shit. And I think uh, there, was, there was a lot of will they, won't they, about whether Nintendo would publish the blueprints for stuff online separately, and I think they did. Mm -hmm. did they, they went ahead and do. They went ahead and did that. Did they publish them like vector files? Keep going. Oh, you ready to go? Because if they, if they did, then you could just laser cut them yourself, which would be really cool. If you got a laser cutter, yes. Yeah. Which I don't know that, that the average Labo consumer will have access to a laser cutter. <laughs> I don't think they will. And that's that's where I think uh, hold up, hold up. Okay. It, it could be a little bit confusing for people. Not confusing, but like a little bit difficult okay. to even use those blueprints for people is. I mean, you don't have perforated edges. Like... Yeah, you can't just pop stuff out. Pop stuff out right. if you have to cut it with like an exacto knife. Yeah. If it's not this thickness of and it cardboard, to, it would have to dealing be with additional cuts. issues. Yeah. I got it all the way through. All right, you did it. Now flip it over. What's that? The blue penis? <laughs> the blue what? Okay, yeah, I see it. <laughs> it kind of has a face on it, huh? And then uh, the, the first thing that Labo has you do, even before you build the RC car, is it has you build, is that up here somewhere? Oh, it's back in the box. Oh, back in the box. Is it has you build like a little sleeve for a Joy-Con that is nothing, it's just a sleeve. It just teaches you to like fold cardboard. Huh. <laughs> All right, ready, and. Goes into there. Oh. Keep going. And this goes into there. So it makes it kind of a tent. 
Okay, I gotta, I gotta crease it a little less then in order to accommodate that. Okay, there. And now it's over there. And I think it's gonna ask me to get the other piece. Yep. Ta-da! I assume it's gonna be the same thing for the other side of that rod. See, this kind of worries me. This isn't actually staying in there very well. I, I mean, that is the instruction it gave me. It's just not staying in there. Okay. So that's going to go. That's what is will it, hold the joint. I, see? I assume that it'll You're be housed that? in something else. It oh, looks like yeah. it might house in. Yeah, it might go here. in there. Yeah. So that would be. So that, that would hold it, it together. Okay. You can tell if it's the right side because both pieces have a matching Joy-Con symbol. So, yep, there. There's no Joy-Con symbol printed on this at all. It looks like this one. There should be a Joy-Con symbol on this side. Oh, you yeah. See. So, you, you know that Also, you know it's one. the right way because the tabs only fit one way. There is also that. Okay. All right, moving on. Ta-da. Don't drop it that way, though. How about this? Why don't we talk about some of the news while we, while we build? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, wait. wait back you know. up. Oh, 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 no. What happened? <laughs> um, Why? Why? Sorry, I thought you were asking me why. Well, like, why? why would you do that? Okay. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Yeah. So that needs this. Ta-da. Is it this go. one? You, oh, you sure, Gilby? It's not that other one? Uh, this one's got... They look different. Uh, yeah, this one's got, right. like, a connecting. This one's handcuffs. Gotcha. Ready? News. News stuff. Mostly, mostly Nintendo news stuff. A uh, couple things about Nintendo have been coming out uh, the past week or so. The One of the big ones being that uh, a hardware... Talking, thank you. A hardware exploit has been discovered for the Switch which is unfixable yeah. for any current hardware that's in the market. And the... <laughs> this, sound, this sounds vaguely familiar. I feel like I've heard this story before. <laughs> the hardware exploit, it's, uh, it's related to the Tegra processing chip, and it essentially enables someone to, uh, if they've got a USB cable and a PC, plug it in, and they can in end up installing whatever they want. Well, on it. luckily not many people own USB cables and PCs. That's a no, very they're, rare they're combination rare. of stuff. No, they're rare. They're rare. So it's going to be uh, probably not an issue at all. But it basically enables people to run any software they like on the Switch. So people have already got the Switch running Linux. Well, this is concerning to me because I feel like this was one of the major downfalls of the Dreamcast was once people were able to well, insert and run any software they wanted on it, nobody Well, the 3DS also had the same problem to be fair in it. Lived it's done on. fine. Yeah. yeah, I think that when when it comes to consoles, the um, homebrew has somewhat less of an impact than it does on, like you know, like PC emulation and piracy. Mm -hmm. But the big concern about it is that if people can get any software running, then they can run cracked, you know, uh, pirated versions of the Nintendo software, which obviously is bad for Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. But it also means that uh, people can install and run other software on it, doing online cheating, that kind of thing. Give me another one. Raises other concerns as well, although I think uh, these ones, because a lot of your uh, financial information and personal information for the Switch lies in... I th okay, I can't say this 100%, but as far as I know, a lot of it lies in the cloud. So you're, if, you, you know, if you store a credit card or something with the store, I think it's stored with the store. But Ben, if you want to look that up and just see like where a lot of in, a lot of that information is stored, that could be a concern for people. However, this exploit it can't it doesn't let you access someone else's switch. It lets right. you run anything you want on this piece of hardware. Sure. So, so you have to have physical access to the device. You do. Yeah, it's not something that you can install on someone else's switch remotely. So right. there is at least some protection there. And so, the I think the concern over uh, personal personal information being compromised isn't as huge a risk as some of the other risks. So don't let your dick friends take your switch. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, the moral of the story that I'm getting here. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like this is really going to affect piracy, and like there's just going to be another a whole another repeat of the 3DS where you can get whatever you want for free. It's true, 
But I, but, don't, I don't know that, that, like, again, like the 3S that lasted forever, even with that. Yeah, I'd love to see the numbers on console piracy, cracking homebrew. It's obviously a concern for the platforms because it, and this is something that I, I think Sony has been like very publicly fighting for a very long time. It's, you know, they're always fighting jailbreaking and homebrewing. The, uh, the like older generations of Xbox. I don't know if the current generation of Xbox has had much of that, but previous generations, people would uh, would crack them open, run whatever they wanted on them, yeah. run their pirated software. I mean, but yeah, I don't I mean, know so, what percentage Sony's of that uh, of that it affects, as opposed to PC, where piracy seems to be much easier and much more widespread. Yeah, Sony has fought it so much to the point that they removed uh, features from the PS3 after launch so that you couldn't run your own you couldn't run Linux you anymore. Install Linux yeah, yeah, there was a, there was actually a lawsuit about that mm -hmm. and if people could provide receipts showing that they had purchased this PS3 because it was marketed as say being able to run Linux and now could no longer run Linux that they were owed money for that because mm -hmm. it was What did uh, it end up being? Well, how much money? Did it wasn't very. Much. It wasn't a lot. Yeah, it was $8. like it was like here you can have forty bucks. I think I, I want to say. I, I'm and you have to have your ass. receipt for your I, PS3. I want to say it was twenty six or something like that because I remember I got an email notification about it because I had one of the fat PS3s and the George Foreman grills. Yeah, I've a uh, with the Spider Man font. Yeah, you could turn the PS3 logo. Or the yes, you could. Logo. They, they got rid of that feature. I don't know why. It was cool. Yeah, I uh, I have one of those as well. I believe it's currently on its way to me from Sydney because mm. I finally got all that stuff shipped and I, I'm pretty sure that's with all my stuff. You'd ship it. I'd ship it, yeah. So, uh, but you know, that's not the, not the first time that a console's phased out hardware to try to deal with a problem. Nintendo, there was a report a few weeks ago that Nintendo was looking at changing their Tegra chip. And at the time, it was like, oh, are they gonna do a hardware revision? Are they gonna put a more powerful processor in there? What's going on? Probably they just they already knew that this was or, like they had discovered that like yeah this was a, a real problem that they cannot they cannot fix it on any existing hardware they have to revise the hardware hmm. and that's what that's all about yeah it's rough yeah I mean it's, we've seen something similar with Intel recently here with the Spectre and Meltdown problems that they experienced last year and it's the same kind of situation where there's no easy fix for existing existing hardware and they're just going to have to redesign chips moving forward. I assume it's probably something similar, yeah, uh, but less severe, obviously, because there's no, there's doesn't doesn't there, affect the customer as much as it affects the 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 the, the Nintendo. Yes. Yeah. This is the the exploit doesn't stop anything on the consumer side, so it's not bad in that way. But it's also it's not just Nintendo that's being exposed because this is a it's a Tegra issue. So I think there's some Android devices as well that are yeah. that have been exposed, and that's always a concern. But as someone who is like primarily paying attention to video games, I care mostly about what's happening with the Switch. Right. Uh, and on that note of what's happening with the Switch, they announced their numbers. Let me show you some of their numbers. They, uh, they just announced them overnight. And uh, basically the, their results, their results, results for the last year, which were very impressive. And- To no one's surprise. To no one's surprise, yes. And also, uh, they announced the president is retiring, and they pronounced, uh, pr pronounced. announced their projections <laughs> for the next year. Where are those I'm looking at? So now? either the president's retiring because of the exploit, or he's retiring because he made a ton of money. I think he, I, I'm going to assume <laughs> the latter. So here we go. Um, yeah, I think like that's a good mic drop moment to go out on. Where it's like you have shipped the Switch successfully, and uh, you're making a ton of money. It's like, peace out. I did it. Yep. Okay, so uh, over through this fiscal year, in its in its first its first year on shelves, Nintendo Switch moved 15.05 million units, which is pretty darn good for yeah. a launch year for a console of any kind. Uh, and that, then, that, that exceeded their expectations, even. Oh yeah. yeah, they I think their initial expectations were they were hoping to sell 10 million for the year, and they figured they'd call that good, and so. Beating that projection by 50%, that's, awesome. that's pretty dope for them. That's a lot of yen. And then uh, in addition on the hardware side, the uh, SNES Classic Edition shipped 5.28 million units. So about a third of Nintendo Switch sales. That's pretty crazy in that context. Yeah. 
I remember the NES Classic Edition, I think they'd said, wow, you've made so much progress on that. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm making shit over here. You really are. Just, we just got to get that Gus cam here. I'm going to move my laptop oh, out of your view. You're good. It's just so that everyone can see oh, it very okay. clearly. That's right. And look at We're that. Uh, the NES Classic Edition, I think they came out and said they had made like 2.5 million globally, which is part of what contributed to it being just enormously difficult to get a hold of. Yeah. And they said they were going to ship a lot more of the SNES Classic Edition. We know they've at least doubled it, so that's something. It's still, uh, I feel like it's supply constrained anyway. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree, although I, I didn't hear as much about it this time. It, initially there was, it was sold out everywhere, mm -hmm. it's difficult to find, and then you just stopped hearing that. Is it yeah. still sold out everywhere? Can you just go buy one? Hey, Ben, you want to look that up? Sure thing. I got one and stopped paying attention. Because I know I, I like, I, there was a while that I wanted one. I don't know if I want one anymore, but I did want one at the time, and I couldn't get one. I like it just uh, if for no other reason than because I can play a lot of those games. They're suited to the TV, and I don't have to try to get adapters sure. to get across all the different inputs up to HDMI. Right. Because or, or worry about like downloading ROMs. And yeah, like yeah, because no TV is, is set up. I'm seeing it in stock days. in Amazon. It is in stock? Amazon. Okay, so yeah, it's not a problem to get Maybe now. I'll think about getting one now. Um, 3DS. Oh. What? They, added, they had me add a part just so that it makes a clicky noise. Oh, it, really? it, was, it didn't click last time I did that, but you hear the click now? Yeah, I hear You got some good feedback there. It's, it's got... A music note on it. That's the that's oh, fucking awesome. That's that lets cool. you know that that's what makes the noise. That's fucking awesome. See, they even say that's how you know it's a real fishing rod. That's really cool. Oh, anyway, sorry to interrupt. I love it. It's a real yeah. fishing rod. It's in a, I also see text that says "ha." Yeah, they, they, they're good. They're about that. pleased with themselves. Yeah. Uh, 3DS hardware still solid, even with the Switch launch. Uh, the fiscal year they sold 6.4 million units, which is pretty great. Then looking, let's see, looking at software. Oh, yeah, okay, you know what? They, uh, yeah, Super NES, 5.28. Amiibo sales, 10.3 million figures sold. Damn. Card sales, 5.8 million units. So their hardware business is pretty healthy. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. It's, it's what, how far we've come from uh, the Wii U days. I just want to point out that step three for making this is to make the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just had to pause there for a second just to point that out. Well, look, you gotta gotta make the ocean. Ocean's not gonna make itself. Give me E and F. You need E and F. E and F. Thank you. You gonna make some room? Uh, I'm all right. Okay. Uh, on the software front, Super Mario Odyssey shipped 10.41 million units, Listen. which means that two out of three Switch owners bought Super Mario Odyssey. That makes sense. It's not, I mean, it's not a huge surprise. If there's one franchise that's going to be purchased by just about everyone, it's that. Yeah, that means one out of three Switch owners are missing out on a fucking amazing oh, game. Oh, it's so good. You remember the right after the Switch launched and Zelda launched, there was a weird thing that happened yeah. where the there were more copies of Zelda for the Switch, not, not the Wii U version, not including that, just Zelda for the Switch. Then there were switches. Switches. Yeah. So more people had bought the game. I don't know, just waiting for. Or it also. Their I think the speculation was it could also have been collector's editions. Yes, I feel like people had their collector's edition and then the version that they would actually play. Right. Which that was a good collector's edition. The uh, the switch case that looked like the, the tablet, tablet was yeah. pretty. That was a great idea. Yeah. But. Pretty impressive for Mario Odyssey. 9.22 million units sold for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which, considering that that was also a Wii U title, yeah, I'm surprised how high that number impressive. is. Yeah, yeah people I, love that game. <laughs> I mean, it was it was really popular at the time. Yeah, I don't think I don't think the existence of the Wii U version ended up cannibalizing no, too much of just like about it. anything. Because I had Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, and I would rather buy it again for the Switch uh, to yeah, play it uh, than dig out and try to hook up the Wii I think I, Yeah, I also owned it on the Wii U now that you mentioned that. Yeah. Same, uh, I'm predicting the same with, there was a Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze that's coming out soon, mm -hmm. and same sort of thing. I could get out the Wii U to play it. I won't. I will just get it on the Switch yep. again. Cause, I think so, too. Well, I, and Aren't they also porting Doctor, um, Doctor, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker as well, I think? I believe so. Yeah. Which, that was an amazing game. Everyone should play that. Let me look that up. 
Yes, uh, it is going to be released when? I don't think they have a date on that yet. Yeah, it's pre-order um, July 13th, 2018. Oh. Now, that could be a placeholder. Uh, but if you want to check and see if it was officially announced. That's on their site. That's so on their site. July okay, 13th. so it, you are going to be able to play it yeah. again July 13th. After you. I haven't played it. I'm excited. Yeah. Guess what? We're building an ocean now. Did I just blow your mind? <laughs> Someone had a lot good. of fun with this. That's great. Um, so what else on the software? Looking at, this, looking at these numbers. Um, 6.02 million units sold for Splatoon 2. That's a great game. I'm, I'm happy to see it's that high. I was worried that it was selling sluggishly, and I still that's I feel like that number should be higher. I agree. I Splatoon, Splatoon 2 is great. Splatoon 2 was an amazing game, or it is an amazing game. I feel game. like it's an amazing game. I feel like I played it less than Splatoon 1, though. Um, yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I don't, I don't I mean, know I, what. I, I, maybe it was too similar, or maybe I just didn't have the same interest the second time around. Could be. I, I mean, really enjoy it. I think it's the kind of game where I would love to have a solid crew that I play with all the time, but Nintendo made... The, the matchmaking and communication so unintuitive it's, and difficult. It's a pain that, in the ass. Yeah. That I just, I don't they came also play it because so, I'm some, basically just randoms. Some network issues because Grace, me and Grace played in the same connection and she always had problems with getting kicked from games and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Do you have like strict net? No, I have very, very open. I figure sometimes, your network would be pretty good. Sometimes pretty moderate, I don't know. It just depends on the mood of my network. But I think that um, a lot of those sales just in, in an extraordinary percentage of them are actually from Japan. Splatoon 2, huge franchise in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think a, a lot of that accounts for that. It was pretty sluggish in the West, which is a shame because it's a great game. And but their so their their total combined software sales for the year were 63.51 million units, which is not bad. Yeah. And then what else? What else? What else? Uh, also, they did their phone stuff over for the for the <laughs> Who year. Who can forget? They released Animal Crossing Pocket Camp during the fiscal uh, to join Super Mario Run and Fire Emblem Heroes, which were both launched before the fiscal. Uh, and but overall, they made 39.3 billion yen off their smart device software, which is 62 percent increase. Move the decimal place over two places, and it's basically the dollar value. How many? What was it? 63 billion? Uh, 39.3 billion yen. So that's what? Uh, $393 million approximately. Wow, you're yeah. good at that. Yeah. Move the decimal twice. Yeah. Uh, it's like it's, it, it fluctuates. It's kind of like it, the. the it's that's kinda, very rough. Yeah. It's, it's probably a little more money than that, a little more dollars than that. Yeah. I don't know. What I think the it's like nine. Is. Every thousand yen is like nine dollars or something like that. Or something around there. So here's where stuff gets interesting for the future. Because it's, it's cool to know how many games were sold and everything. It doesn't directly impact us as gamers necessarily, except for, I guess, Outlook for sequels. But they also have their projections for the next year. And I think that can, that can drive a lot of speculation as to what they need to do to get to those. Right. So their, uh, their current fiscal year is going to end March 31st, 2019. They do, they do March, or sorry, April through March for their fiscal. And they are predicting 20 million Nintendo Switch units. So another 5 million on top of what they sold this last year, which was already very, very impressive. I think that they're going to need to fucking up the, the software library announcements. That's, exactly. I figure that's what our next point here is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so if they make 20 million units, it will be a grand total of 37.79 million units in the market. They are also expecting to sell 4 million 3DS units, which is interesting because if it sold... Six million, they're expecting a decrease of like 30%. Which is understandable. Right. Uh, they've said that they're going to continue to support the 3DS, but it does look like their, their, their expectations for it are ramping it, down it as is, they ramp up on the Switch. It is my least favorite part of Nintendo Directs. The Switch, yeah. or sorry, the, the, the 3DS the, the 3DS, yeah. You know, I still, I really love my 3DS, but now that I have a Switch... Every 3DS game I see, I just, I'd love to have on the Switch. Yeah. It's too bad there's no, like, like, slot for Switch games, or for 3DS games on the Switch. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. Eventually, maybe Virtual maybe Console. Maybe someday. Yeah, whenever that Yeah, comes that was up. supposed to launch with the, the Switch, right? A year later. Haven't heard anything about it. Right. Maybe, 
maybe they will like pull it back, retool it. I'm expecting a launch alongside their paid online service. Yeah, they better yeah, have something that makes that, I'm ex- that work. What I'm expecting for that, uh, at a minimum, is virtual console and cloud saves. Mm-hmm. That's mostly what I care about, cloud saves. Cloud saves, uh, yeah, that, that's a good feature. Now that, it, I, now that it's hacked, it doesn't matter. Though. You can just download your saves. That's right. Benefiting everyone. Thanks, hackers. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually an interesting point. I might consider that because you, you the idea of losing my Switch and losing everything yeah, is totally. just terrifying. You don't know. Well, and we don't know. It's maybe too early in this scenario to find out if like saves are tied to like a hardware ID or anything. That would be crazy. Not, it would be crazy, but you know the way Nintendo operates. It's something that's possibly it's, it's in the realm of possibility. Yeah. Yeah. So, in order to sell 20 million units. This fiscal, in addition to the 15 million they've already sold to early adopters, they need Pokemon. a very strong lineup. They've already announced uh, Smash Brothers for a Switch. That's going to sell millions, I think. They, the, the Smash community is much bigger than anyone realizes, and will absolutely go in for this. I normally buy those games and play them a little bit and like them a lot, but don't play them a ton. Sure, yeah, same same thing. I tend to, I'll get. One, I'll play it a bunch just recreationally for a while and then fall off it. Uh, Teddy, Bernie's youngest, got really, really into Smash on Wii U. At the same time, he got really into Amiibo. He would he loved training up his Amiibo. Oh, of course. With that, and I'm sure we'll see a return of that, especially with their Amiibo business so strong. I'm sure we'll see a lot of integration there. And so that's going to be a big one. And I think you're right on Pokemon. I think I think, I think that's a strong has, indicator it's coming this fiscal. Those numbers, man, like you have to have something like so that. So you'd expect a huge announcement within the next little over a month, maybe within the next six weeks. I right? think I think their E3, E3 booth. Timing. I think their yeah. E3 booth is going to be a giant Pokeball. Well, E3 booth last year was just Hyrule Village, right? right. That, all they showed was that exactly. castle. That was a great booth. All oh, right, not Hyrule Village. What the fuck am I saying? That was two years ago, I think. That was two years ago. That was they were showing oh, right. the U version. It was Super Mario Odyssey this last year. That's was, right. They built like uh, they City. built New Donk City. Man, oh, they do. Cool. They go all out on their booths. You know what's tragic about E3 booths is you see them and they're the ones that go all out. Uh, Mafia Three. Yeah, also, that was a uh, crazy built, booth. Yeah. yeah, they built uh, like a little bit of uh, New Orleans it's there Street, and, it's and it was three so days. great. And then they tear it down and it's gone forever. Yeah. It's you only have your memories. Sad. Yeah. Only my memory. Yeah, except then I get confused. What happened? What? Yeah, Mafia built like a city block. That was cool. It was really cool, but. I think this year will be Smash, Pokemon. I think those are going to be their their two really big tent poles. They're still really bringing some stuff up from the Wii U because I'm sure that is a little bit easier on them and they can fill in their first party lineup right. as well. So that's stuff like Donkey Kong, Tropical Freeze, and which I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to having it on the Switch. It's so stupid. There's if you look at the games that they had on the Wii U and nothing did it for them and they released the same thing on the Switch and it's going bonkers. People just like the Switch. I bet we'll get a I bet we'll get a Wind Waker HD remastered announcement as well. Like uh, just bringing the Wii U version over. That I would love to see that. Do you I'm think sure. it's do you think it's too soon since we did get a Zelda within the last year? Maybe they hold that off. If, for if a it's year? low-hanging fruit, I don't it, see why they wouldn't do it. It's a remaster. So. I mean, it's not like a it's already been, it's already was released. It was the, already a remaster. Right, so. So, potentially, but the that kind of prediction, trying to hit within your first two years on the market, 37 million units, that's huge. Hey, guys, just want you to know the ocean's done. I made the ocean. Oh, you wow, made the ocean. Congratulations, Gus. Yeah. So, that completes step three. Uh, you made an ocean. Well done. You're going to have a break. Do you want if a break? You want one. I'm going to take a break. Yeah, okay. Whew, that's it. <laughs> well, what's left? I, I I don't know. Steps four and five? I don't know what that is. Oh, so that was just step three? Yeah. Okay. Got, so got steps got four and five, we haven't, we haven't strung the rod yet. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll find out. Find well, out next time on next Dragon Ball Z. Spool. So now you make the spool. Well, I kind of want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't I do that? So I think that's these pieces. No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm done. I'm done. I'm kind of make it okay, wrong. fine. But uh, are you having fun with the build? Or okay, I'm, not, I'm having a lot of fun. So as a tinkerer, you approve yeah, of Yeah, yeah. It's great. I love it. I've been super excited about it. I've been showing everyone I can about Labo. Labo is one of those things that is 
like I see it and I'm, I'm like, all right, I know what you do, but what do you do? I, 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 Is it like actually playing hand, having I, hands on time with it makes it more real? I, I want to finish the the fishing rod. I'm curious to see how that thing is, like the game for it is. Oh, I want to follow up on something you said earlier. I just see, I just, I wasn't looking at my laptop because um, I was building, but Ben said that. Switch credit card info is stored on your switch and not on Nintendo servers. Okay. Thank you for that Ben You know you can tell us that stuff. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, so I actually <laughs> found some this looks like contradicting yeah, information as ways. well uh, We'd kind of moved past it, but from what I'm seeing here I, Nintendo's website says that you can upload it to your account your actual your, your Nintendo profile on your switch But then access it later via their website, but then on other parts of their website. It says it's only stored on the switch Huh. Okay. Regardless, it means there's local information. Yes. Okay. So, you may be able to access your credit card information via the via breaking into the Switch hardware. You're doing it. I aren't can't you? stay away. You're doing it. Uh, but because you can't remotely access anyone else's Switch with this exploit, you have to you'd have to get physical access to it. But if, say, you lost your Switch and someone got their hands on your Switch, they could get your information. It does say that each password is encrypted per profile, so I don't know how much security there is there, like, on a local level, but, yeah. Thank you, Ash. I do what I can to help. I like popping out the cardboard. It's fun. That's, like, where, that's like the, the bit where I'm happy to be a helper. All right, now... Do you want to talk about PUBG? Yes, okay. <laughs> Here, I'll hand you this. You, you can build. Okay, I will build. There's uh, those pieces and the, those there. So uh, I haven't had a time to fully digest all oh, of the... Really quick, sorry yeah. to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, also, Nintendo, Nintendo's president is retiring. <laughs> yep. That's kind of also news. Yep. Kind of news. Uh, so uh, Tatsumi Kimishima, who took over when uh, Satoru Iwata passed away, is stepping down as president. And that's kind of big news. I think it kind of signals. It's kind of what we've seen with the Switch announcement and some of the more recent Nintendo moves. It, you haven't been seeing your tried and true old faces of Nintendo coming out to talk about this stuff. They've been trying to really profile that they have newer, younger people working on these things. And I think this is part of that continued transition where Nintendo's undergoing a transition from the old guard to the new guard. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll see someone, uh, we'll see obviously someone new step in, but uh, a fresher face come in. Yeah. To start steering the company. Now that everyone knows they can make money again, they're not in the Wii U cycle, uh, they're, 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 they're firing they're on all cylinders. Yeah, they're, they're on an upswing. Yeah, it's uh, now it's uh, Shintaro Furukawa, who is currently in charge of the global marketing department. Oh, I didn't he's know they'd already to, named it. Yeah, named him. he's going to take over um, Satoru Iwata's. Old, old position. Yes. Uh, okay, so PUBG patch notes. I haven't had time to go through all of them in super depth yet. Uh, they just came out right when we started filming. Uh, Polygon already has an article up of top three. There are three things to know from PUBG's biggest patch ever. Uh, first one, guns have been rebalanced, all of them, oh, no. which is really oh, interesting. No. It looks like pistol viability could be a lot better now. The damage on pistols is way up. Damage on ARs is slightly down, not too bad. Uh, shotguns is slightly down, but 25% decreased spread on shotguns. Uh, DMRs are mixed. SKS slightly down, VSS and Mini-14 up, which is good because VSS and Mini-14 were both too underpowered. Uh, SMGs are up overall. LMGs are up as well. Uh, new DMR in the game, so there's a, what is that? So it's a new 7.62 DMR. Uh, looks like, simple, it says it's similar to the SKS, so medium to long range, semi-automatic. And finally, no more level three helmets in the world. They only come in crates. So people are, are mixed on that. So there's some other things I think that were pretty big in these patch notes as well. Um, there are a lot, of, well, I guess I should go in order here. Their limb shot modifier damage has been changed, so now shooting limbs does more damage. Shotgun pellet spread is decreased by 25%. Uh, let's see. You also, what was the one I told Ben about? I told oh, you, oh, I'll find it here in a second. Say which one? <laughs> yeah, there were, so, there were so many big ones. Oh, you, they've slightly, this is the one I was thinking about. They've slightly decreased movement speed when holding sniper rifles or LMGs and shotguns, which I think uh, is, a, is a good thing. It's a, it's a it's neat that they're finally doing that. They added, that, so the new DMR is called an SLR. What's they're adding DMR? six new attachments. Yeah, the marksman's, marksman's rifle. Yeah, yeah. The, there's six attachments. The weirdest of which I think is the duck bill, 
which is an attachment for shotguns, which reduces vertical pellet spread, but increases horizontal pellet spread. Probably a good attachment. Um, I don't know. Depends. I don't know how narrow uh, it duck bills your your pellets. Like now, you might not get enough pellets on someone. It seems like it'd be good situationally if you're trying to clear a room with a bunch of people in it, mm -hmm. but maybe not in a one on one. Uh, so then the other new attachments are a light grip, which uh, reduces recoil recovery time but increases vertical and horizontal recoil. Uh, a thumb grip, which reduces vertical recoil but increases horizontal recoil. It also increases recoil recovery time. A half grip, which reduces vertical and horizontal recoil, also reduces recoil recovery time. A uh, 3x scope and a 6x scope, and the 6x scope is variable 3x to 6x magnification. Um, you can also now change reticle style and color on the red dot, hollow sight, and 2x scope uh, using the, the zeroing, zeroing keys. Boats now sink when destroyed, so you can't hop out of a destroyed boat and use it for cover anymore. Uh, hmm. Decreased maximum submersible time from 35 to 15 seconds. Thank fucking God. I think the submersible time was way too high before. Uh, they also increase the amount of damage you take when you're out of air underwater. They finally have map selection available, so I'll never play another fucking round on Miramar. Which one's Miramar? The desert one. Ah. Um, I, I really don't like Miramar. Uh, they've made some improvements to Miramar regardless. Uh, increased the size of the oasis, added more buildings. And then, of course, tons of bug fixes. So this is really a huge patch, and I think this is the kind of thing that people were looking for. They spent, I think, uh, Blue Hole or PUBG Corporation spent a lot of time struggling early this year because of hackers and having to deal with exploits that were going on in the game. So hopefully they're starting to put that to bed, even though I still see it, and uh, we can start seeing more content coming out, and hopefully we get Savage officially named and officially in the rotation soon as well. I didn't want to bore you to death, that's why I kind of tried to speed through all of it. But uh, that's 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 it in a nutshell. I highly recommend you go read the, the patch notes. There's really a ton of other stuff that I didn't have time to cover. There was an earlier dev blog where they talked about uh, the reasoning for a lot of these patch updates, uh, main, basically being that they want to level all of the guns back down so more guns are available that will even the playing field, but also give a more wide array of attachments so you can customize your gun based on your play style and what yeah. exactly you're trying to go for. I think they said they wanted to make every gun viable and not make it to where like there is a best gun. You know, I think right now there's definitely a hierarchy where if I see a certain gun, I say, I know when I'm gonna switch and when I'm not gonna switch. Now, hopefully everything's more viable. I think the thing I'm most concerned about and most excited about is the increase in pistol damage because it's quite a bit and it, could really change the way school drops go when you have, or any area with lots of concentration where you have everyone struggling to find a weapon. So anyway, that's it. That's my PUBG three minutes. No okay, more. well, so, I mean, you say that, but I mean, I kind of want to know more because it seems like it's a pretty big change for the entire meta of the game. Yeah, I think the gun balance uh, is, is a change, and I think it's for the better. I think seeing everything normalized to where you can you're not necessarily screwed by an RNG is good. I think that was also the thought process behind putting the level three helmet exclusively into uh, drop boxes or drop boxes into crates. Uh, oh, the other thing I didn't even mention, I didn't see it this time, is the adrenaline syringe is now a rare world spawn and not only uh, in crates. So I think the explanation they gave for the level three helmet going into crates was it became, in end game, it essentially became whether or not you were screwed by the RNG throughout the game, because having a level three helmet essentially negates one headshot. Mm -hmm. So if you were late in the game and you couldn't find one all game, you were screwed compared to someone who did. So now they're trying to level the playing field in the world and reward people who go out of their way to get to the crates, which I think at first I was really crate, apprehensive about it. It also but. means that people like those crates are now gonna be a much more uh, important resource to fight over. So if a crate drops, oh, and they said you every, will see more people going for that crate. They also said every crate will have a level three helmet in it. Okay, hmm. so they absolutely want people fighting over crates. Right. So they're trying to mix up some, I guess, like of the, uh, some of the, like the interaction points. Yeah, and uh, just kind of focus. And I think that if people are going to consistently win rounds, they're going to need to be more aggressive with crates, if, even if they haven't in the past, just for level three helmets. They also added sniper rifle quick draw magazines and extended quick draw magazines to spawn only in care packages as well. That, is, you that is correct. Those were rare world spawns before, and those are definitely something, even if I didn't have a sniper rifle in game, those are things I would always pick up and hold on to, just because you never knew when you were gonna run into it, when you were gonna need them. Uh, so again, like, that's really pushing people towards crates, which seems like that's a big uh, initiative for them right now.
Okay. Okay. Oh, we're to the string point. We need the long orange piece of string. Oh, this is it. This is it, guys. I don't know what is step four the, is going to be. There's these two pieces left. I mean, You're step, in four, five. step five. Yeah. yeah step know. five. These, there's just two pieces. And these two. Okay. They're, they're okay. very plain. So that'll be really quick. Ta-da. All right, we're going to string this bitch. I mean, this... Wow, this is a family-friendly Labo stream. So we need knots in both ends. Can do. Oh, shit, nice. I didn't tell you there was a prerequisite for knots. <laughs> I like, everything's very precise except for this step. Leave about this much sticking out. Yeah, what is that? Okay. You think that's about... That looks about right. Yeah, I, think, okay. I think you nailed it. Whew. Nailed it. Man, so much pressure. Is it both ends you need knots? Yeah. Knots at both ends. How, do I, how am I missing that? It was on the previous screen. Oh, okay. That's why reading's important. Hi, guys. Are you live? No. Uh, no. Oh. We're live. No, we're, we're building Labo. Oh. You can step in front of that camera if you need to. I really think Jack's going to do that tomorrow. I'm off topic. It's, there you, go. you know what? It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You guys will probably be drunker. Yeah. Yeah. I look green. <laughs> okay, so here's what we do. One of these knots goes into this hole. Uh-huh. Which I haven't. Oh, I was wondering yet. how they were going to do that. Okay. Okay. Because I was, I was wondering how the string was going to get inside of stuff we'd already built. Like, right. I guess punching a knot through makes the most well, sense. Yeah, it was, it's a little Wonder. bit weird. I would almost expect to like have the side off so you can pull the string through mm -hmm. it to be a little bit easier. That's what I'm going to do. So, if I can still. Mm. I, I wouldn't go against the labo gods. Well. They're wise yeah. beyond our understanding. Are they though? Because this way. Like it's a, it seems like it's a asking a bit much to punch all that also, through. Also, it seems like they should have uh, put a little plastic end here, like shoelaces. That way it's a little firmer and easier to get through um, the yeah, hole. Yeah, so that's a little bit weird. But now that it's in, that's mm -hmm. great. And then this all goes back together really. So quick. I know you guys talked a little bit earlier about so, some of the uh, custom creations people had made with Labo. Have you seen the list of what's come out just in like the three days it's been available? It's been really impressive. Uh, my favorite was probably, uh, it was one of the more simple ones. It was uh, people... Uh, giving knives to the RC cars. <laughs> oh yeah, that's and awesome. making them fight. fight. Yeah, Put balloons on the back end. People have been cre recreating a lot of like the Game and Watch games uh, with Labo. They've recreated the one of the Undertale boss fights, which is kind of really cool. Oh, that's interesting. Because you could, like you always have the little heart and then things moving and running around at it. Uh, someone's created a dog treat dispenser. There's the knife fight bots. The this right wants way. me to make sure I roll it the right way. What's the right way? They're it, identical. Is there a difference between the left and the right side? No. I think what it's saying is not to go under, but to go over. But one way is under, one way is over. See, like this. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. They're the same on both sides, I think. Okay, well, we're winding it up. Uh -huh. And then one of the other major things I've seen from just custom creation is people are using it to make a lot of music. There's been music. a lot of really cool customization for music people have made. Okay. Roll, yeah. roll, roll, spin, 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 spin. They really don't need to show you doing it this much. <laughs> it's taking you, it, it, it even knows. It, oh. Okay, that's enough. For now. Wait, are you putting that in the ocean? Uh, the ocean's full of strings. Looks like you know? the way that that's going. So let's find out. For some reason I assumed that would be in the box. So we're going to take this, roll it up through the hole. The grommet. Hey, you want to? That's, wanna, that's, wanna all, that's a lot of beer. Is that a whole pitcher of beer, Gavin? Yeah. How fast can you drink you that? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, hold on. Can you drink? How much drink that fast? Drink. Just a little bit. This is our Mario fuel. Oh, it's a lot of foam. Oh, that's just a cappuccino. You gotta, gotta go into it's it. It's a cappuccino. <laughs> that was all foam. <laughs> In about five minutes, that'll be beer. Thanks, Gavin. It'll be like this much beer. It'll be so little. Okay, so it's going. It's got to go under. And up through the hole. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Me. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Teamwork. Ah. Teamwork. <laughs> I dropped made it the and immediately work. it fell right back there. Well, I think I was putting some I pressure on it too. Right okay. So now that we've got that. It here's. Okay. I'm not gonna jump ahead. I was gonna. I almost pulled an Adam, and then I didn't. We have to do it just like that. Yeah, like you gotta snake. make sure you gotta make the right. you gotta make that right. Okay, ready and then take the rubber bands awesome. and slide those in the slots in the ocean because, as you know, the ocean has slots. The ocean that you built and did a great yeah, job thank on. Thank you. 
Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Michael, no! I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I knew that one was gonna happen. That oh. was good. That was the one in my Look, pocket. Look, it's fine. The broadcast crew knows anything. all about you. I didn't drop anything. It fell out of my pocket. Get that one. I'm good here. You're, Hang good? On. You're okay. gonna dislodge me. All right. Hang on. I'm sorry about sorry, that. Sorry about all this. To be fair, the keg ran out of beer. The keg ran out? Oh, sorry. Should we open it and just pour it in here? Is it all I mean, the we, same beer? We can do that, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about all so this. Look, we got you. 16 or 17. You still got, uh, you still got so another one in your pocket, dude. That's step six. The other one was like that. Oh, uh -oh. I see. Yeah, it's the top like heavy. That will fall out, and then, and then it did. I was right. Is the beer out of? Is the thing out of beer? Yeah, it's or out. is it just out of CO2? Oh, it was all. Oh, the foam was coming. Out, so I think it's out. <laughs> that's the sound. Well, to be fair, that's mostly music. Mario Maker's fault. Yeah, it's a spare. Because we oh. yeah, took two pictures yesterday and we tried to take two today. Doing, eh? Typical this. achievement hunter. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if you're Sorry now. Sorry. Oh, that's gonna fall too. Sorry. Oh, be so careful. I don't know why I'm you got just it? pouring it in, but kitchen. Kitchen makes more sense. All right. Guys got work to do. Hey, sorry. Good. Sorry. Good luck. Good luck with the Mario Maker. Sorry. Yeah. Good luck with the Mario Maker. Thanks. It's gonna go. Sorry, broadcast. It's gonna go great. Cool. Bye, guys. Love you. Love you too. Oh, shards of glass are not fun. Hey, Gavin, uh, Stardew Valley is multiplayer is coming out soon. Let's play it. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, like, it's like two weeks. Hell yeah. Now that we've got that settled, moving on. All right, tighten those rubber bands. Yeah. Okay. All right, Good. time to, time to, uh, look at this. It's rod. all coming together. Okay. We're going to finish this up and then we've got it. And then you got one more piece. You got step five. I get my head Maybe out of step there. five can be the post show. Yeah. Because we've been very indulgent and run over. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, okay, this has gone through, front to back, and then it's going to punch into that bit right there. Yep. Uh, I just, I don't like punching this through this. It just seems like the, like the one part that hasn't done, made it itself easy. Okay. Get in there, you. Seems like that son. X might break one day. You think? That little part that holds the string in? I suspect it might. Okay, here's what we're doing. Oh. If it ever pops out, push it back in. Oh, the rubber bands kind of pull it back. Yeah, so they'll they'll try and like keep oh. it. Okay, so that Did puts tension. Okay, back. so got this closed. They do. Close up the ocean. Yeah, look. Oh, because is it twisted up? Yeah, it must be. Like on the inside, I think when it spins, the rubber band twists. Huh. Oh. Ta-da! Make sure you have plenty of room, okay. so you don't bump into anything or anyone. Oh. Tell us, go! I'll let you do it. Here, you take it. It's just to move it up and down. Oh. Check. I think that's the end of step four. Spool. All right. All right, what is it? I think step five is just putting the Joy-Cons in the console. Oh, so we made it. Yeah. We made it. You did it. We did it. Good job. You guys, we made it. We made a fishing rod and we made an ocean. Now that was actually. The, you should play on the post show. So it takes some time. It takes some time, but pretty straightforward. Yeah. Based on this build. Based on a $70 price tag. Thoughts? Uh, Thumbs up. I like so the idea in? of yeah. it, but not the price tag of it. I, uh, I'm with Adam on this one. I think that it, if I had... Is this a $30 thing? Kids, yeah. $30 right, is a great price. Price is a bit high. Yeah, $30 for me would be like, all right, I can, I can fuck around with this. I can build one or two things. Moving on. Concept is really cool. I, I love this. I think it's great as a tool that can teach kids about like how things go together, uh, get get them into very like basic programming. Really awesome. Mm -hmm. Price point, a little bit high. Yeah. A little bit high. A little bit high. Uh, so that's where we in on it. We'll play with this a little bit in the post show. But for now, we're gonna wrap up. So thanks for joining us. Uh, if you have been listening to this on audio. 
uh, let us know if you liked cardboard ASMR or if you noped out of it a long time ago. Um, if you are watching this uh, on, on video, let us know if it was, uh, I don't know, it was fun to do live builds. We're still talking about doing a PC build. Um, some companies have actually contacted us and said they want to send us some equipment to build a PC with, which is really, really cool. So we want to, we still want to do a live build of that, but uh, we want to make sure that's something that you guys are into as well. So please let us know in the comments. Uh, if you're a Rooster Teeth first member, check out the post show. We'll play with some of this stuff. It'll be really fun. Uh, that'll be New Game Plus exclusively on the website. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Bye.